for a while now in Tarkov, there's been a general consensus that VRAM and RAM is a little bit uh, overused in Tarkov. And it puts a lot of pressure on systems that are lower end. I want to dig into this a little bit more though. And I got a couple comments talking about MSI Afterburner's usage per process option, which shows the actual amount of data being stored versus what we normally see in say task manager, which is the amount of allocated memory. The difference between allocation and actual usage is allocation is memory that's reserved, whereas actual usage is, well, how much data is actually there. An app could still allocate a certain amount of gigabytes of VRAM, for instance, while still not using all of it. So once I read that information from those couple of comments that I got, I decided to actually look into it and get some more data about it. The rabbit hole got deep. So deep that it delayed this video coming out and subsequently made me second guess myself on if I should even make this video at all. To put it out in the open first, I am not sure of the data that I'm about to show you. And now that doesn't mean that I think the data is necessarily, you know, inaccurate, but rather that the data that I have doesn't have a firm conclusion that I can make from it. I have a conclusion that will hopefully clear some things up when it comes to texture quality and its subsequent increase in RAM usage, but I can't confirm it. And there's a bunch of caveats to it that I just want your opinion on before continuing on and testing some more on it because I've already spent about six to eight hours on testing and I figured I'd stop myself before digging myself too deep when it doesn't actually matter and isn't worth looking into. So what was the goal of this? Well, the main goal was to figure out the difference in between that number on the right for VRAM and RAM and that number on the left for VRAM and RAM. How much of a difference is there in allocation versus actual data being stored in the VRAM or RAM for the given process? The results that I found were kind of crazy and they also allowed me to open some new doors to further videos I can make regarding settings I've already covered. For the testing I'm about to show you, I went on high texture quality along with medium and low and tested those on a offline street scab raid. I tried to follow the same path at around the same time, but the point wasn't really necessarily the consistency of it. The point was to just get a rough ballpark number to see how the numbers fared with those settings and then subsequently look at the RAM usage and see how that was doing. In fairness, I also included high texture quality with both MIP streaming at the highest possible settings and with Streets of Tarkov lower texture resolution mode. The main issues I wanted to see was, is the game gonna stutter when I just crank up the texture quality on streets? As I know for a fact when I'm on streets that my VRAM quote unquote, the VRAM allocation, the number we normally see hits eight gigabytes for sure. And I wanted to see if the actual data usage reflected that. So with that being said, let's jump over to the data. A five minute snippet of data that I collected over my time in streets. It was, I tried to get it in the same area, but obviously I can't get everything perfect in an online raid. So take that as with a grain of salt. This is purely the allocations, the normal number that we see. And with that allocation number, you can clearly see that both high and high with low text resolution mode are on top followed by medium, which steadily climbed from 7,500 up to 8,000 allocation, and then low down here, bouncing around at just under seven, more like 6.8 gigabytes of VRAM. And that's specifically the allocation, the normal number we see. MIP streaming, on the other hand, was jumping all over the place. And I consistently saw this when I was monitoring the numbers when I was playing. This makes sense though, as it's constantly streaming in and out textures from the drive. So I'm not too worried that this data is shaky while the others are pretty consistent. With that being said, I then collected the actual usage number. So how I did that is I wrote down the lowest and the highest number that I was able to see to give you guys a sense of the range of the actual usage, the actual amount of data in VRAM for Tarkov. And the numbers that I got were vastly different. To explain the next graph, you'll see on the left side of it, the lower number. So the lowest number possible that I could get for the data. So for example, if I go to the low VRAM here, this number is the actual amount of data that's being stored on the low end and then the actual amount of data that's being stored on the high end. So at a maximum I saw roughly 3.5 gigabytes of VRAM being legitimately used by data and on the lower end I saw right under 3000 around 2.8. While in contrast you can see the actual allocation is much much higher nearly two times the amount at 6.8 gigabytes. What I thought was the most shocking about this data which is of course the VRAM allocation versus the actual amount of committed data 
is how vastly different these two numbers were. At a maximum for high texture quality, I only saw up to 6.5 gigabytes of actual VRAM data being stored according to MSI Afterburner, which I thought was interesting as for textures, of course, they're stored in the VRAM, but copies of them can sometimes also be stored in RAM as well to fetch them quicker, at least according to what I read, as all the data I could find on this, this section of data, the VRAM allocation versus actual usage per process was from Reddit and other forums. So that's again why I'm making this video. But with RAM usage, that was another avenue that I wanted to explore, as I know the amount of RAM that's being used depends on what texture quality setting you have. I assumed this was from VRAM overflow, but taking these numbers to, into account, I could clearly see that the game wasn't actually using all of the VRAM that's being allocated. Now that's pretty common for video games, but to the extent it was doing it, for example, low textures, I thought that was kind of crazy. So I went to see how much data was being stored in the RAM, depending on what texture quality setting I chose. And also before we advance, I thought it was pretty interesting that the high with low texture resolution mode for VRAM was staying between medium and low for the high textures. Whereas of course the high textures were all the way up here at the yellow line. Just something to note for the next part of the graph. So scrolling down here, this is the RAM usage that I had on streets, depending on what texture quality setting I chose. This is specifically the normal number that you see. Again, the normal allocation, the thing you'd see in Task Manager. You can see for high textures, it's absolutely ridiculous. An insane amount of usage getting nearly to the 32 gigabyte limit. This is of course with automatic RAM cleaner disabled, but the difference here is quite staggering. Another interesting point of data here as well is that the high with low texture resolution mode RAM usage was very similar to the medium texture qualities RAM usage instead of low, which contradicts what I was originally finding in my first video. I may have to do a refresh on that video and look at more data to get a more firm conclusion, especially since I have these new numbers. Another thing that's interesting to note as well is that high texture quality, thanks Tarkov, high texture quality in contrast to high texture quality with MIP streaming is significantly lower in RAM usage, almost 10 gigabytes, it ranges from about eight to 10. That's quite big. That difference in data being stored in RAM or at least being allocated makes me think that that's because of MIP streaming. That's because textures are not being thrown as extra copies over to system RAM anymore. It's streaming them directly from the drive. This of course led me to then collect the numbers for the actual usage. How much data is actually being used when it's allocating this much RAM? I mean, this is ridiculous. And this is also the reason why the game's overflowing into the page file and why BSG continues to recommend that you set your page file to something crazy like 25 gigabytes. So I got those numbers as well. And again, it's the same method as I did before. I hand collected the lowest and highest numbers that I saw and put them on the graph. With that being said, the RAM allocation versus the actual usage was at least a bit more consistent. High was able to stay roughly in the same range with a sometimes at maximum six to seven gigabyte difference. And that amount of difference stretched to the lower echelons of it as well, with most separated by at least four gigabytes of RAM usage versus allocation of memory. I thought this was extremely interesting and I'm not quite sure what necessarily to make of this data, but what I can say and what I gathered from this data is that VRAM and RAM are being improperly handled by the game in my opinion. It's likely storing extra textures inside system RAM without properly disposing of them. Hence why you see the drastic difference in RAM usage between high and high with MIP streaming. Of course, this could technically be associated with the fact that I'm no longer hitting that eight gigabyte quote unquote limit. But then of course, the question comes to, I'm not technically using all of that data. There is still several gigabytes left in that data for stuff to be stored into. This could be to help reduce stutter as then the memory, once it needs to be called, already has a place inside VRAM. But of course, I haven't made a Unity game, so my knowledge on this is not necessarily the best. But of course, I can recognize that this is probably a problem. And like I said, high textures seem to exacerbate, or whatever that word is, the issue, as those textures are larger and likely take up more space in the system RAM that is not being cleared correctly. This combined with my previous data, knowing that automatic RAM cleaner does reduce your RAM consumption by at least a couple gigabytes, 
I think that setting is a must for playing this game. You can see that even with the low textures, my allocation was right at 16 gigabytes for streets without automatic RAM cleaner. And even though there wasn't actually the same amount of data for the actual legitimate usage, it still begs the question of what is using all this data, because this can be a major problem for systems that don't have the extra room to spare. Having an insane amount of data being logged inside the system memory can absolutely destroy systems and especially fill up their paging file. This caused the blue screen of death that several of the people within my Discord have gotten, and most likely, since they're probably not using NIP streaming, they're running into this issue where their system is overflowing, either on RAM or VRAM allocation, and thus is mistakenly placing stuff in the paging file. With that being said, I wanna say a couple other things before I finish the video. A couple caveats. The reason I'm making this video is because I'm not sure if I can actually trust this usage per process statistic that MSI Afterburner displays. Furthermore, I'm not sure if a technique like this, like increased allocation, is common in more intensive titles. I know that some textures and copies of them are stored in RAM for later use, but I'm not sure if it's common to this extensive degree. My main theory is that the allocation being so much higher than the actual usage is to try and avoid stuttering when a lot of textures need to be loaded in, or at least in part avoid that stuttering. But the allocation is insane, and it, at least from my data, it seems to suggest that the system is then spilling over allocation to RAM in sort of a panicked mode because it thinks it's overflowing on VRAM when there's plenty of room to spare. It wasn't uncommon for me to see around 5 gigabytes of actual data being stored in my VRAM while I was allocating the full 8 gigabytes, the full buffer. And like I said before, MIPS streaming's RAM usage per process seems to completely control the climb that I see in other graphs. It reduces RAM usage and it reduces VRAM usage. And since this is meant to reduce VRAM usage, I Furthermore, I think that that supports my theory that it's helping to reduce the issues that are seen with the allocation. And with that, there's a lot more data that I could collect on this with also a lot more accuracy, but I wasn't going to dive too far into this before I got the opinion of the masses and got some of your knowledge, frankly, to help figure this out. Again, all of the stuff that I could find regarding this setting in MSI Afterburner was off on Reddit or Unity forums, and it wasn't really accurate and trustable data that I would want to cite to you guys. But since this was mentioned in my comments, I still wanted to look into it and still wanted to give what I saw at least going on streets and scabbing in there as a sort of opening of the hood, if you will, on what's going on in Tarkov. Sadly, with this data in mind, I really can't suggest going above low textures if you're at 16 gigabytes of RAM. Unless you have a bunch of VRAM to spare, it really isn't worth it. The allocation just constantly spills over. Secondarily, automatic RAM cleaner seems to be a must to help avoid this issue. And I also think that the lower texture resolution mode is also attempting to combat this issue, but to one avail, I'm not too sure. I want to collect more data before speaking on that anymore. With that being said, please do leave your opinion on this in the comments below. I really want to try to learn more about these stats and figure out what's going on here so that we can get a better picture of what settings are best for people to run. I know it might be stupid just contrasting two numbers in MSI Afterburner, but my point still stands that there is at least something wrong here, even if I'm an idiot and don't fully understand what I'm talking about. The behavior is odd, and it doesn't match the behavior that I've seen in plenty of other games. And even though I don't have games like Cyberpunk 2077 or big Unity titles, I still feel like the difference between the allocation and the actual usage is way too much. Not to mention Tarkov using this much data will completely destroy the average average user's experience as they're not sitting there testing the game with nothing else open. They probably have Chrome open and Discord open and whatever. This can cause more of the blue screens that we've been seeing with the memory overflowing into the paging file and having nowhere else to go. But with that, expect more videos on this topic coming up pretty soon. I will continue to look into this and continue testing it and stay tuned for more information. I'm going to be learning more, and hopefully those of you in the comments who know a thing or two about this stuff can also help me out, as I've been trying to do my due diligence with this, and I don't want to spread any misinformation regarding it. But with that, for now, thank you so much for watching this video. I will be streaming shortly after this goes live, so keep an eye out for that. I'll be streaming every Friday. Make sure to like and subscribe, join the Discord, blah, 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 blah. You've heard it a thousand times. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. This is Clem.
clocking out. Later.